I actually liked one of your videos in case you didn't notice. I liked them. Okay, pause. Probability is a measure of how likely it is for an event to happen. And probability is always from a number between zero and one, okay? When you're talking about a percentage, that's when it goes from zero to 100, okay? So basically all you're doing is multiplying your probability by 100%. What happened? That's all right, I'll watch on the video later. So it says if an event is certain to happen, then the prob probability of an event is one. And if an event is certain not to happen, then the probability of an event is zero, okay? So if it's likely to happen one, not likely to happen is zero. If it is uncertain whether or not an event will happen, this probability is some fraction between one and zero. For example, if you roll a die, we're not quite sure if it will land on a four, but the probability of it happening will be one out of six, or whatever decimal that is. Oh, since we, since we multiply the number by 100, and if one, one, six, one, six, one six, six, hundred, 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 hundred percent. So a few a few uh, definitions for you here that if you didn't already know, probability the chance of it will happen, certain an event will happen, impossible it will never happen, likely a greater chance that it will happen than not happen, unlikely greater chance that it will not happen than it will happen. You guys probably use those in everyday language. Possible outcomes are the number of outcomes you are able to achieve. Experimental probability can be found by conducting repeated trials. So in other words, if you want to flip a coin a hundred times and you want to try to figure out the probability of you getting 40 heads out of those hundred tries, that would be an example of an experimental probability, okay, actually going through the process. Uh, possible outcomes, what if I roll the die and I want to try to figure out that, what's the probability of me rolling a die and the number is prime? What's that probability? Prime. First off, what does prime mean? No found by one in itself. One itself. So out of those six numbers that are on the dial, which numbers are prime? One, three, one, three, five. One, three, five, and two. And two. Got you. So what's the probability of me rolling a die and the number being prime? Four. Four out of six, which is about point six six six. So. Probability of events, number of favorable outcomes over number of possible outcomes. Basically, there are four prime numbers out of six possible. That's how probability works. Everybody understand that? And then, ready to give some examples? And then you divide those numbers and multiply by 100. To get the percentage. But if you just ask for the probability, they're looking for the decimal. So multiply by 100. So probability is the decimal for that percent. Gotcha. Exactly. So what's the probability of the spinner? We'll stop on part A. One out of four, or 0.25. Awesome. On to the next one. I have three pennies and five dimes in my pocket. If I pull out a coin, what is the probability that it gets down? Five out of eight. Five out of eight, or? Five out of eight. Point sixty. Some number that we could. Point sixty. What? Two five. Six two five. Well, how do you get five out of eight? Why? How? Five dimes out of eight. There's five dimes and, it's and three pennies oh, for a total of eight. eight coins, right? He's like a, I was looking at the picture. I was like, how did you get five pennies? Me too. <laughs> also, if the person that's reaching no, down to their pocket isn't sitting smart enough to read it, it's going to be like, so if the person that's reaching no, down to their pocket isn't smart enough to realize the difference between a penny and a dime. Well, see, now you get into the like specifics with like size and shape and feel. You just get all those things out, out of the way. If you roll the die, what's the probability that the number show, shows, shows, shown is greater than four? So what is that point? What? Three, point three, three, point three, three. Repeating. Okay, so about basically one third. Because what are the numbers that are greater than four? Five and six. So that's two out of the total six numbers that you have to choose from. Okay? Um, now, with geometry, okay, geometric probability is probability that involves geometric measure or the length or area, okay? So even geometry has its place in probability, okay? Uh, probability and length. Let AB be a segment that contains uh, the segment CD. If K is on AB, it's chosen at random, the probability that it's on CD is as follows. Take the length of CD divided by the length of AB. 
okay, because you have CD, it's on AB. So the probability that it will land on CD out of that whole segment is given to you right there. Similar process with area. You're trying to hit a particular area, but you have this entire shape to fall on. Probability still works the same way. What's the likelihood that I'll land in one specific area out of that entire shape? That is how geometric probability works. Prime example, take your problem today. If I ask you to find the probability of you growing a dart in that shape and landing in the shaded area, you would have to do the, the, uh, the probability of it would be the area of the shaded region divided by the area of the entire space. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. That's how probability of your geometry works. Okay? So let's get to some of those examples. Start with your easier ones. Question? I'm not our probability of uh, it was it's a fraction you always want to simplify your problem. <laughs> um, here, is the sign of probability that a point chosen at random on PQ is on RS? Okay? So we want to figure out what is the probability that if I pick a point is on RS. Well how long is RS? Uh, What's the length of R S? Six. Yeah. It's six. Okay. Oh, However, I got PQ, that segment length that I that a point can fall on. So how long is PQ? Uh, it's, it's ten. So when it says find the probability that a point chosen at random is on R S, that is six units out of 10 possible units that it could fall on. I can reduce this fraction to be what? 3, 5. 0.6. 3, 5 or 0.6. So I have basically 60% chance that a point is actually going to be on RQ or RS on this number line. See how it works? The blink. Diameter of the target shown at the right is 80. If the diameter is 80, what's the radius? 40. 40. So this is of the target. The diameter of the red circle is 16 centimeters. So what's the radius of the target? Eight. Or the, um, it's 8. So of the red target, the radius is 8. Now there's a reason why I'm asking you for these specific things. Yep, it's our, this is a circle. It says if the arrow is equally likely to land on any point on the target, what is the probability that it lands in the red circle? To find this probability, you need to find the area of the red circle and divide it by the area of the entire target. Because basically, I have this whole target that I can hit, but I want the probability that I'll actually hit the red part. Okay? So in order to do this, I need to find the area of that red circle, which is the formula what? Pi r squared. Pi r squared. So the red target's radius was 8. So what's 8 squared? 64. So this becomes 64 pi. Yes, you can multiply it out, but you're going to see something in just a second. Uh, the bull, the whole bullseye, the whole target is still a circle. <laughs> so the radius is 40. Plug it in. What's 40 squared? 1600 pi. Now, if you notice, I have a pi on the top and a pi on the bottom, which means what? Cancel. They cancel out. And 64 and 1600 reduce down. The number goes into 64 and 1600. Two. Yeah. Two. That's a, that's yep. Long 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 eight. What's the 64 divided by eight? Eight. And what's 1600 divided by eight? Two. Okay, that's a little bit smaller. Now, what number goes into eight and 200? Four. 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 It's bigger. Five. So, what's eight divided by four? Two. And 200 divided by four? Oh, uh, fifteen. This reduces down as well. One out of 25. 
Because that is going to be, give you the shaded region. I have the whole circle by taking out that inside circle that basically leaves me with the ring. So since they're all circles, it's going to be pi r squared. What's the radius of the whole, the big circle? Four. Four. Because the diameter is what? Eight. Eight. And you know this because it says that it's two units. No, it's not. It's ten. Sorry, ten. <laughs> All right, it's 10, because it's 2 up here and 2 down here. Can, can, can you work on the 10? Oh, so it's 5 oh, minus pi. Wait, Harry, what is the range? No, 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 yeah. It, it is a pi. because 6 divided by 3, the, divided by 2 is 3. And you just add a 2 on the side, and you get the radius, which is 5. Sorry, I mean, like, you can care if you want to. I know, I was saying, I was like, hey, don't say that, Evan. So what is a five squared? Twenty-five. Three squared. Nine. What's twenty-five minus nine? Uh, Sixteen. 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 Sixte